Good morning. Welcome to Fishing for Men. Don't you like the spot where I'm standing? It's a bit nerve-wracking, so I'm going to talk quickly. If you hear noise in the background, the sea is right beneath us, and it's so awesome. We're coming to you today from Asa Fontaine Harbour. If I thought I was blessed in the Heart Bay last week, you must see how blessed I am today. And Pastor Norman's going to share with you the testimony that we have. Today, the word, the law of liberty, you be challenged, and as always, enjoy the word. Wow, grace and peace to you today. We are busy going from port to port, from launch place to launch place, where traditional fishermen live and where traditional fishermen go to sea. And we are praying on the high tides and the low tides, according to what the Lord has shown me and told me to do. And it's been awesome how the Lord has spoken to us on the turn of each tide. Spoken to us about what's coming in, spoken about what's going out, spoken about old and new, etc, etc. It's just been amazing. So we came here this morning to Azerfontaine. Now I must tell you that Azerfontaine is predominantly a very well-to-do holiday village. The houses are decadently huge, I think crazy, but it belongs to people, so bless them. But this town, in my, in my dealing with it since 2000, has been a town of corruption, a town of unrighteousness, a town of lawlessness in, in many ways. In 2001, we were here almost every day because that year the fishing boats launched here 185 days in the year. And early in the mornings on that launch over there, people would be smoking big dacha pipes and using buttons right in front of the law enforcement officer, right in front of the harbour master, right in front of the inspectors, and then they would go to sea. And we would, we would preach there in the mornings. I would pray for every boat as it went, and we would preach. And the people that live in those houses above the harbour didn't like what I was doing. Because my talking about drugs in the town was making people aware of the size of the problem. Some of the, of the local boat owners were keeping their crew in their backyard at night and feeding them drugs so they didn't even go off the property because of the racism in the area. And also that they could keep their crew. And, and, and the boat owners were buying the drugs and the drug dealers were coming down into the harbour. Everybody knew, there come the drug dealers. Stop, open his boot, selling drugs. Children of the, of the holiday makers were using and abusing drugs. But I'm talking about drugs and those people didn't like it. You know why? Well, because many of them are guest houses or accommodation establishments who felt that my bringing drugs into the open would make tourists not enjoy the place. Wow, that was a big wave. <laughs> Lucky I'm still here. So they didn't want me devaluing the tourist destination by talking about drugs. Let's cover it up. Let's smear it over. Let's, let's abuse people. Let's oppress people so that we can make our money. So you know what they did? They went to Malmesbury and applied, or they got a lawyer to apply to the magistrate to get a court order to keep me out the harbour. Can you believe it? Ah. Today, as I stopped at the harbour coming to pray on the low tide, the harbour master tells me that he and his whole family and entire families that we were ministering to from, from 2000 until 2005, when I last ministered in this area, have come to know the Lord. We planted seed and someone has, has harvested and now those people are in the kingdom. It's just so awesome for me. All the opposition that I had here from this corruption. And yet, people that we've shared with and ministered to and, and, and prayed for and blessed and 
shared the word with over and over and over, have come to know the Lord. It's so exciting. It's so exciting. Now, you know what? The fishermen from this area are still fishermen. Most of them are what they call, and I don't like to use these words, the white boat owners. Only the boat owners live in town and some of the white crew. The, the fishing community don't live here. They live in Darling, they live in Atlantis, or they come from Hout Bay all the way here every day. Uh, about 120 kilometers, 250 k's a day return trip. They come here to get a job on a boat to fish. But it doesn't matter because God's righteousness is for everybody. And God's justice is for everybody. And so a man who has invested money and bought a boat and employs people is doing good if he's not corrupt. And as I prayed this morning, the Lord just gave me a word. And I'm going to, at one o'clock today, the boat owners are going to gather here on the harbor, some of the very people that used to swear at me, and, and they've asked me to come and pray with them today. So at one o'clock we're going to pray with them. And God willing, I'm going to have an opportunity to share a short word with them before I do. And so asking the Lord, what do I share? What do I share? And the Lord laid this on my heart and it just, it hit me so hard that man, this is a word for all of us. James chapter 2. I'm going to read to you, the Lord gave me verse 8 for this place. So I'm going to read to you 10 verses or 13 verses and then we'll look at verse 8. Is that okay with you? Read with me. James chapter 2. My brothers, have not the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons? Let me just say, what he's saying is, don't let your faith be governed by your respect of persons. Okay, because then you'll only believe what they want you to believe. Or you'll only act out your faith the way they want you to act out your faith. For if there come unto your assembly a man with a gold ring in goodly apparel, and there come also a poor man in vile raiment, and you have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing, and say to him, Sit thou here in a good place. And say to the poor, Stand thou there, or sit here under my footstool. Are you not then partial in yourselves, and are become judges? of evil thoughts? Hearken, my beloved brothers, has God not chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom which he has promised to them that love him? But you have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seats? What I was telling you about these people. Do not they blaspheme that worthy name by which you are called? If you fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. You do well. But if you have respect to persons, you commit sin, and are convinced of the law as transgressors. For whosoever shall keep the whole law, and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. For he that said, Do not commit adultery, also said, Do not kill. Now if you commit no adultery, yet you kill, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak you, and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. I'd like to read to you just a few verses from the Amplified. For whoever keeps the law as a whole, but stumbles and offends in one single instance, has become guilty of breaking all of it. For he who said, you shall not commit adultery, also said, you shall not kill. If you do not commit adultery, but do kill, you have become guilty of transgressing the whole law. So speak and so act as people should, who are to be judged under the law of liberty. The moral instruction given by Christ, especially about love. Now, this is a tricky piece of scripture. Because if you are a law keeper, you think the scripture is about keeping the law. 
if you are a Christian who is still under the law, bound by the law, judged by the law, then this is a law scripture. And this law scripture is saying to you this morning that if we are to have faith governed by respect for men, then we actually have evil thoughts. Because then we prefer the rich to the poor. We prefer the clean to the dirty. We prefer the, the lani to the common. We prefer the high society to the normal people. And, and we forget completely what the gospel's about. And we try to please those people. And we try to build them up. We want more rich people in our church. We want our church to be seen as a, a richer establishment. When a businessman walks into our church, we make the believers move out the way that the businessman can come sit in the best seat in the church. When a famous man, when a big name comes, everybody else must scatter so that the respect can be given for the person. You know, because when we do that, we judge the other one. When we choose the one in the gay clothing over the one in the vile raiment, and that gay clothing has nothing to do with sexual orientation. When we choose the one in the gay clothing over the one in the vile raiment, we are judging the one in the vile raiment. It's not just that we say, we better or you better than them. You are saying, you are not as good as this person. You can sit here as long as there's not somebody better than you to sit here. But when somebody better than you comes, now friends, that's evil thoughts. That's evil thoughts. So James says in verse 8, and this is my scripture for this town, that if you keep the law in terms of the scriptures, okay, if you're a, a law person, if you love your neighbor, you do well. You do well if you love your neighbor. Now, I'll tell you something else about this town is it's very religious. There's a, a religious, a big religious church building in this town and people flood to the church. There's a couple of like home group churches, law, religion, one day, plastic, pretense. So if they were to love their neighbor, they would be doing well. But he says the problem is this. That if you are going to keep the law, you best keep the whole law. So it doesn't help you say you love your neighbor, but you're guilty of choosing men over each other. You're guilty of judging the rich and the poor. You're guilty of judging whatever. Because it says if you keep one law, but you break another law, you're still guilty. So to, to be religious and to be self-righteous and to be all these things is meaningless. And listen here, even loving your neighbor as yourself is meaningless if you break the law. But he says you do well. And so many people clap themselves on the back. Oh, well, you know, we employ so many people and we provide in work and we provide in a tourist industry. We're providing an income. Who benefits from the income here? The ones providing it. There's no working class people live here because there's no, there's no township, there's no squatter camp. Thank God there's no squatter camp. I hate squatter camps. Because people suffer in squatter camps. That's the, you know, to me a squatter camp is, is an absolute judgment over people. They're not good enough to have their own home. They need to squat. Who said? Who said? So James says, listen, you need to speak and do as one who's judged by the law of liberty. You see, friend, the law of liberty has set you free from the law of sin and death. The law of liberty has not given you liberty to 
break the law of sin and death. It has set you free from the law of sin and death. The law of liberty puts it back on your shoulders to live that liberty. Now when I understand where my liberty comes from, when I understand that it is Him who has set me free, it is Him who has fulfilled the law on my behalf, it is Him who has paid the price, it is Him who has taken the judgment and sentence that was upon me, upon Himself. It was Him who was without sin, who became sin. So that today I can live as a free man. But there's a law of liberty that says when you live the law of liberty, there must be liberty. So I can't live in liberty and yet be judging someone else. I can't live in liberty and yet be oppressing someone else because then I take away from them their liberty. My liberty is to live Christ in me, I in Him. I am free to be Christ on earth. I am free to reflect the glory of God. I am free to receive the promises and blessings of God. I am free to be healed. I am free to prosper. I am free to be blessed. And I am free to bring healing and prosperity and blessing to others. But if I place any kind of bondage upon them through my judgment of them or through my dealing with them, guess what? I bind myself back to their own unrighteousness. Because I can only be judged by the law of liberty, James is saying, if I'm living it. I can only, I'm going to repeat that, I can only be judged by the law of liberty, in other words, you're free, if I'm living it. The moment I stop living, the moment I stop speaking and doing the law of liberty, I'm going back to the law that binds, the law of sin and death. Listen what it said in the Amplified. Concerning the law of liberty, I remember it's in square brackets, so it's a little explanation. The moral instruction given by Christ. So friend, <laughs> liberty is the moral instruction according to the, this little amplified translation. The law of liberty is the moral instruction given by Christ. So if there's no, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt, thou shalt not, thou shalt, thou shalt not. But Jesus Christ has come and said, follow me. There is Therein lies the moral instruction. Follow me. Now yes, at some point he's asked, what's the greatest law? And, and, and he says, love, thy, love the Lord your God with all your heart, your strength, your soul, and love thy neighbor as yourself. But that in the context of a law. They were asking him concerning law. He also says, a new commandment I give unto you. Because you see, in, in, in the law there wasn't this. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. So, we can go back to loving your neighbor under the law, or we can go, law of liberty, follow the moral instruction. Follow Jesus. Be as Jesus was and is. Be as He is. You know, Paul says, imitate me. As I imitate Christ. So what Paul was saying was, you know, friend, my liberty is because I'm imitating Christ. You want liberty. Look, look where I'm getting my liberty from. Look how I live my liberty. I am being Christ on earth. <laughs> Follow me, says Jesus. Follow me. And then he doesn't give a list of rules and instructions. 43 days of discipleship training, six months on how to become a church member. He doesn't give all that. He just walks around being God amongst the people. He walks around doing God's work. I can do nothing I haven't seen my father do. I can say nothing I haven't heard my father say. I can only do the will of him who sent me. 
That's following Jesus. And, and what did he do? Well, I've come to heal the sick, to the lame might walk, that the blind might see, to set the captives free, and to bring good news to the poor. Behold, the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and be saved. That's what Jesus came and did. And, and he did it, friends, by... <laughs> Let's read it before I say it, so that you're not thinking I'm making it up. Especially about love. That's how Jesus did it. He came and loved us. He came and loved us. Now, John 3.16 says that, you know it says that. I'm going to tell you again it says that because you must never forget it says that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Now, friend, when Jesus came, love came. That love, when God gave His Son, He gave His love. When God gave His Son, He gave his love. God sacrificed His love. The love of God was judged and went to the cross that the gospel might become the strength, the power of your salvation. Everything Jesus did was, was love. He doesn't need to tell us in the law, love your neighbor. He showed us. How many scriptures don't you see of of totally unrighteous people coming to Jesus and leaving blessed. Of religious people coming to Jesus and leaving blessed. Oh yes, many went away angry. Many went away cursing Him because, because He loved them. He loved them. He didn't judge them. Hey lady, caught in adultery. I'm not going to judge you. Why? Woman at the well. I'm not going to judge you. Why? Because he didn't come with judgment, he came with liberty. And he loved them. The scripture says that every sick person that was brought to him, he healed. Why? Because he loved them. The scripture tells us, and he had compassion. When, when, when he arrived at Lazarus' burial place, he wept. Friends, God, God loves you and he has given his love. That you might be saved. And if we're going to be followers of Jesus, then we are people who walk in love. We are people, you know, the Bible says that I can love him because he first loved me. Man on his own doesn't know how to love sacrificially. Man on his own doesn't know how to give his love for the sake of the next person. Man on his own doesn't know how to put himself down that his love might save the next. Jesus says, greater love has no man than this. Then he laid down his life for his friends. Because loving yourself or loving money more than you love the person next to you. Man, there's no love. The love of self and the love of money are evil things. But, but the love of others is showing forth the grace and the goodness of God. And my prayer today for this town is, hey, I set you free. I set you free from the law of sin and death. And I declare that your religious works have brought you only into a worse position. And to corruption and to unrighteousness and injustice, I say, be gone from this community. And I say unto the people, hear me. Hear the, the word of God. Walk, talk, do as one who is going to be judged by the law of liberty. Otherwise you will be judged under the law and be found guilty. That's what James says. I'm not making it up. So you got a choice. Live under the law. Pretend to be good. What, what, what. But you will be judged and be found guilty. But walk, talk, live as one expecting to be judged by the law of liberty and you will be taking liberty to everybody you will be loving your neighbor as yourself not because God says you must but because you are free to do so and you want your freedom to be on them you know friends Jesus was free up to the moment he was arrested wasn't he he was free up until that moment the night he, he prayed in the garden and he said, Lord, 
If there's any other way, take this cup from me. But your will be done. At that point, he bound himself to the law of liberty. He was free. But then he bound himself to the law of liberty. And he said, let the love of God set others free. Because I'm free. He was still free to walk away. He was still free to come down from the cross. He was still free to beat up those who were beating him. But his love overrode. His love became the law of liberty. How about you? Are you oppressed? Are you judged? Well, don't worry. Just be free. Love those who oppress you. Love those who judge you. Love them. Then their oppression and their judgment means nothing. Go on. Go and be free. Go and be free today. And watch the world become a better place. Stay blessed.